Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Hemmings Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast. My name is Mike Musto, as always, and I am here with Mr. Nicholas Reed. Now, you might not have heard of Nick yet, but you're going to because I'm going to introduce him right now. Now, Nick, I've known for a while. We've done some video work together. Last project we did, Nick all of a sudden decided out of nowhere to tell me he just co-edited this book with none other than the actress Diane Keaton. The book is called Dead of Night. And it is a, it's one of the coolest things I think I've, I've viewed in the last, I don't know how many years from a visual perspective. So Nick, I'm going to let him tell you what the book is about. Then we're going to tell you where to get it. And I'm going to tell you why it's so special. Nick, how are you doing, buddy? I'm fantastic. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So dude, book is called Dead of Night and it is a, I'm going to call it a photographic experience that falls a little bit on the macabre side but that is just visually, visually stunning. How would you describe this book? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's, um, yeah, dang, that's a really hard question <laughs> to answer because it's like how you describe this in an eloquent way that's like, it does it justice. But basically it's a book about car crashes from like the 50s to the 70s. Mm -hmm. And to put it as simply as possible, but they all are photographed at night and they're photographed in a really unique way that really brings out the, the sort of the, the horrific beauty of these, of these scenes that are sort of, they're almost cinematic in their, in their nature, but they're also like horrific as well. So it's, they're yeah. all very real and like they strike at an emotional point in your, in your body. <laughs> well, it, it's very interesting because when Nick says horrific beauty, um, I think that's a very good way to say it and a very kind of eloquent way to say it. Now, the photographer was a gentleman by the name of Robert Bolts. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And now was he, was he a crime scene photographer back in the day? Now this is a photographer that actually took the photos and then the photos in post were actually done and, and edited by Nick much, much later on. We're going to talk about how he came to get them, but what was, what was Robert Bolts's, what did he do for a living and how does he come to have all these photographs? So Robert Boltz at his core was a photographer, but he worked as a coroner in um, Wisconsin from the 60s, I think it was like 1961 to 1989. So he was either like a, um, what was he? A, uh, he was the deputy coroner and then he became like okay. a coroner. Okay. And so his job was to go to accident scenes and take pictures of the accidents when people died. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time in, in that part of the world, it's very icy. It's very, you know, yep. a lot of slippery roads and things like that. And back then, you know, a lot of drunk driving too. Right. Um, and so people would get in these pretty bad accidents. And so Bob would go and photograph these scenes and like a normal coroner would just go there with like a camera and just take a picture and just document the scene. But he did it in a really unique way, which as a photographer, you know, he, he took, took this sort of mundane job and made it like creative and interesting. And so what he would do is he'd take a four by five camera and he would set it up on a tripod and take a picture and leave the, the shutter open. And then he would walk around the car with a flash and light it from hmm. all angles. And so it would give the illusion of like studio lighting out in, the, out in nature. And it was, it's really cool because it just has all this, like has a really unique look to it. And it's, it's very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I, I think what's what's neat about it is that, um, like when you said horrific beauty, when you first think of of what the photographs are, right, the photographs are of a, a very tragic situation. The photographs are of car wrecks, of, of people actually dying and the people in the photographs have been edited out. And Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was part of your job. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So there are not all of them had bodies in them. Sometimes the, the bodies have been taken out. Right. Um, before the photograph before Bob got there. But um, there were some where like there was, you know, bodies literally in the shot. And so in order to respect the, the, the victims, victims. yeah, yeah um, we decided to take them out and, you know, make it just about the cars and sort of that right. and try not to really draw too much attention to the, the tragedy that happened in each right. of the scenes. But, you know, you know, just make it a little bit more like, I don't know, sanitary is not the right word, but 
Yeah. No, I, I think, well, it, it's really interesting. And I mean, I, I'm going to hold up the cover for those that are listening. And I strongly recommend that you go to YouTube and you actually watch the videos so you could see some of the visuals that we're going to put up. But the cover of the book is is pretty black, right? It has the title on, on the rib. But then when you look at the photographs themselves, the photographs are black and white and they are beautifully, beautifully taken and beautifully edited. And one of the things that I think people will notice about any, any one of these photographs is that one, um, you know, Robert Bolts, the way that he took and, and lit the photos is one thing. But the other thing is when you look at the vehicles themselves, we're talking, yeah, when you look at the vehicles themselves, you're talking about vehicles from the 40s and 50s. And the, the amount of, of I, I don't know if carnage is the right word, but think of it like this. Vehicles back there were no crumple zones. There were no side impact protection. So when a vehicle crashed, it crashed. It was a, a, a massively traumatic experience because a lot of times people just didn't walk away. And the way that that Robert Bolts took the photographs and then, then the way that Nick edited them, each one is kind of a cinematic piece. And it's one frame. It's one photo that tells an entire story. And it's an amazing thing because you, you look at them for you know, I mean, I probably looked back over this book probably 60 times. And I, every time I look at a photograph on another page, I, I think of something else. And it's just a phenomenal thing. And, and I don't want people to think that this is a macabre experience because it's absolutely not. It's, it's just, I don't know how to describe it, Nick. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. But when you, when you were editing the photos, like, first of all, how did you come to, to get these photos? How did this whole project come about? Yeah, so when I, I'm a photographer and I also do video, but when I first started off, um, I was doing mainly photography and my photography was seen by Diane Keaton out, like I did some photographs for a, a bedding company and she saw my, the way I photographed sheets of all things and said, <laughs> I want to know that photographer. <laughs> I did it in a really unique way that was really interesting and it was right in her sort of aesthetic yeah. And so from then on, we've been working together and that was 12 years ago, 13 years okay. ago. And um, so I worked with her for like Bed Bath & Beyond and like she did a whole line of like linens and bedding and stuff like that sure. for her own company. And one day she's like, hey, I come over. I want you, I want you to see something. Yeah. And she pulls out this Tupperware thing that's, you know, one of those big yeah. Tupperware things. And it's filled with um, little brown envelopes, you know, four by five. And yeah. each one of those is stuffed with like 20, 30 negatives. And she's like, what do you think of this? And like, I have no light table. All I have is like a window. And so I hold it up <laughs> and I look out. And the first image I see is just this reverse, you know, negative image of a car wreck. But just from that instant, like the way I looked at it, I knew instantly that, oh, these are, these are something special. These right. are really cool. And she's like, do you think we can do anything with this? And I'm like, we can make a book out of this. This would be awesome to do like something very cool with this. Yeah. And so it was very much a passion project. So over the years, we just slowly worked on this book when we each had a free time, you know, we would yeah. get together. We had all the images scanned and, you know, low res scanned so we could actually see what they look like. And we went through them one by one and picked out, you know, first we picked out like our favorite thousand. And then we picked right. our favorite 500, you know, and then we got it down to this, like this book. And um, then we began the process of like editing the photos, really making them clean and yeah. really working, scanning them high res because scanning four by five negatives is not cheap. And so like, we wanted to be sure that we were picking the right ones to work on. And um, yeah. And so like over basically 10 years, we worked on this book together and it finally came out earlier um, about four months ago. So, OK. Yeah, um, it's 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 quite an experience. I mean, it's, it, you know, obviously working with cars, you know, in my career and and I hate to say it, but crashing a few in my time and, you know, um, there's something very interesting about a car wreck. There's something interesting about how metal folds and the shapes that it makes and when you look into, you know, a photograph of a wreck, you can kind of visualize either how mundane or how tragic it truly was, right? Just from the shape and the, you know, the, the decomposition of the metal and whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, the fact that every photo is in black and white and that it's lit so perfectly, again, you will spend 
I, I can't even tell you how much time just looking and picking apart every photograph. And as a photographer, when you first saw them, was that was that interesting? Were you like, oh my God, I can't believe, like, I can't even, if you went through thousands of photos, how you came up with the ones in the book, I can't even imagine what the other ones were like. I mean, there's a bunch, but I mean, some of them are just not very good. And, you know, they're very basic, you know, I mean, he was having a bad night. He just wanted to get out of there. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> right. done, gone. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, yeah, you're right. There are like, for every one, there's probably 20 that are just as like, amazing and just in a different way but they didn't quite you know they weren't quite in focus or they were just a little like the composition was off and so yeah looking at these images I was just enamored with them from the very beginning once I got over the sort of the horrific nature of them the the beauty of the metal and the, the night and like oh and that's another thing we don't have just night photography as well we have day stuff as well right. but it's Correct. not as it's not as amazing because the whole scene is you can see you know, barns in the background and you see cornfields, you know, it's just right. like, it's not as cool um, to have that, just that inky black night, just sort of enveloping right. this one scene where it's just like totally encapsulating this like picturesque scene where there's just infinity of darkness behind them. So it's like, that's where the dead of night came from. It's just like that, that Diane came up with that name, like almost like from the beginning. And that's what it was. Well, so there's a paragraph in front of the book and I'm going to read it if that's okay. Yeah, sure. And I believe this was, uh, this was uh, written by Diane Keaton. It says, in the middle of the night, I woke up to a loud noise. Grammy and I ran to the front porch. A car had crashed into a telephone pole. Grammy told me, go back, to in go back inside right now. When I woke up the next morning, the car was gone. Now, that right there is, is a, a, a very descriptive moment in time, Right. That for most of us, right, when we see a, a car wreck or some type of accident, um, we're usually on the road. We're rubbernecking, right? There are sirens, there's an ambulance, there's whatever. And we get a glimpse of it. Um, and then we never, ever see it again. However, the book captures that glimpse. And it does it in a way that is extremely captivating. So my question would be, how, how did Diane Keaton come across this photo? I guess more importantly, why did she have these photos? Uh, is is interesting? And I'm God bless her for 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 capturing them and taking them and, and holding on to them. How did she come about them? Uh, Diane has a very unique aesthetic, and like she loves black and white, and she loves uh, sort of macabre image imagery and like you know just sort of yeah. funky weird like she's got a really quirky sense of humor and you know it, things like this sort of speak to her aesthetic um yeah. but that's not to say that she sought these out like i'm not entirely clear how they came to her like as i understand it after bob died she bought the photos off of somebody that had got mm -hmm. them from the estate sale sure and so they knew that she like, liked this kind of thing. And so they just said, Hey, do you want this? And she's got other negatives, similar sort of weirdness, not necessarily car crashes, but like, you know, portraits and things like that. Right. They're all very right. interesting and unique. So she's sort of a collector of the unique and sort of cast aside. Right. So it's cool. And so it's really neat. It's, it's really cool. And the thing is like, I don't think I would ever, if, if you're visual, if you if you work in any type of visual medium, right, whether it's photography, whether it's film, whether it's a video production, um, I think all of us who do that for a living, we're always looking for that one specific image or that one specific shot that can define an entire an entire scene. Right. And there always seems to be that one something that we capture um, each one of the photographs in this book does just that. And it's. Again, if you were to tell me, you know, you're like, if, if you were just, if Nick, if we would have sat down and said, Hey, Mike, listen, I'm going to do this book about car crashes. And there's just one photo of the car. I probably would have looked at you a little cockeyed <laughs> seeing the book in person and viewing the photos. Again, this is not where you have to be an automotive enthusiast. This is where you just need to, to like imagery, imagery that tells an entire story imagery that I swear to you, you will go back to and flip and flip. I don't, I mean, I don't know how many times. Um, it's absolutely tremendous. So Nick, when, when you were doing this, okay, was it difficult to choose the pictures? I mean, there, you said there were so many of them. 
how did you come across a photo and be like, that's, that's one of them. And I know you said you whittled them down, but how did you get to the finals? Yeah, that's a good question because it was, there's a lot of debate between Diane and I back and forth as to which ones were the worthy of the book. And a lot of it just came down to our personal aesthetic decisions in the end. You know, once we had like a hundred really good ones, they were, they were all really good. And yeah. it was just like, we tried to get ones that were unique to the, the scenes that we were sort of putting together. So like there were some where, you know, there's a lot of cars on the roofs. So we tried to limit the number of cars we have that are right. turned, like turtles. And then, you know, we got a few people, um, a few of them where they're wrapped around trees or, you know, like things like that. And so, you, you know, you want one tree wrap per book, I think is good, a good ratio. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It just like, we tried to just match them up and sort of put them in an order that, you know, seemed to flow really well. And then, you know, yeah. traded images in, in and out. And these were the ones that worked the best we thought. And yeah, we worked with the publisher and they, you know, really worked with the, the, the flow of the book and the editing and the, the feel of the book. And so the publisher had a, a lot of, um, a lot to contribute as far as the way that the book feels and like the right. types of paper that they used. And like right. even these edges, these black edges of this paper, we tried to print these on uh, black paper initially um, and do like sort of the silver ink. But yeah, we did a couple of tests and it just didn't work. It just didn't have the right. depth of, you know, the, the whites and the blacks didn't have the depth. So to still give us the, the feeling that we pin, printed these on black paper, they painted the edges black of these huh. books. Like just, yeah. yeah. And, and it, they did a really good job. Like, it's amazing. So um, this whole book is like, it's a really interesting, it's a tactile experience. It's a visual experience. It's a, it's a thought experience as well, because yeah. you're just sort of you're envisioning these stories up until the final moment of all these. So it's really kind of like you were saying, each one of these is a story in itself. So with a very definite ending. You with a very, you had to very definitive ending. How long would it take you to edit these photos? Like from the, from the onset, when you saw the, the photograph, you said, okay, this is the one we want to use. With each edit that you did, were you trying to bring out certain aspects of that photograph and trying to highlight certain parts of that image or, or, or how, how does that actually work? So there was a lot of back and forth between Diane and I. So we would select the final, the first, the initial image we'd start. And it was very, right. you know, gray, very average sort of negative. It hadn't, you know, this is photographed on a four by five negative in the middle of the night with a guy with a flash. So not all your exposures are going to be perfect and not, you know, it's not going to be perfect, you know, in every way. Right. So we start with the, the raw negative, clean it up, get rid of all the dust that we had in there. And then from there, we would take out any kind of like really um, visually offending, like things like telephone poles or, sure. like, you know, trash, like lots of trash. We'd find like, you know, when a car rolls, everything goes everywhere. Everything goes. So right. We tried to keep it kind of tidy and really make it just about the cars. You know, sometimes there's like some pieces of trash that we thought were right. like appropriate for the scene. Right. Um, but I would work on these months, like I'd work on it and then we'd go over with Diane and she'd always say, Oh, let's take this out. Let's move this a little bit, you know, and just yeah. do things like that. So overall, like, you know, 10 years, I, don't know, I forget how many images are in here. Like there's 25 or something like that. Right. Um, you know, I'd, I'd work on these oh, days, hours, you know, it's just like, there's so much. And they're really like, when we scan these, we did them really high res so we could print them really big right. if we needed to. So the amount of detail is, is stunning and it comes through in the book. You know, you can really see it. Um, well, there's no question. I mean, for, for those out there, when you, that was my book rubbing against a microphone. When you look at these, the resolution on the printed page is fantastic. And it really kind of transports you into, into what happened to an extent. Like you can almost feel like what the, like I'm, I'm looking at one right now of a, of a, I, I want to say a late sixties station wagon and I'll put the pick up here. Right. And it's, you know, the backdrop is a cornfield. Half the car is missing. And so part of me is just going, you know, you, you try to visualize one as an automotive enthusiast, two as a driver, two as somebody that carts people around all the time. What caused that? Right. What did, what did they hit or what hit them 
to rip, almost rip a car in half like that. Right. And then you look at it and you go, it's kind of like this weird ending where you go, did they survive? Didn't they survive? Like were there photos in here where was where people did survive where the passengers survived? Oh yeah. Yeah. There are ten, like plenty of these were like, it was a, the two cars hit or something like that. And there's right. You know, I would say if the guy was there, there's at least one death, which is right. kind of a, a somber thought, but right. um, yeah, they're not all like tragic. Everyone died kind of accidents. Like, right. You know, well, that's and, good. In, in fact, some of these, it's been told to me and I haven't confirmed this in any way that he also worked for the insurance company. Um, so he would take pictures for insurance purposes. So there's, there's the possibility that some of these are actually more for insurance claims than, than the coroner's duties. Right. Um, and that's specifically like there's fires in this book as well. We use those as sort of yep. like to break up the, the flow a little bit and just to give you a sort of a visual um, taste of something different. Um, and it's, you know, there's a house fire in here that kind of pops up periodically and right. breaks it up. And that was, I think, specifically for insurance and things right. like that. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. And I think that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those books where when you purchase it, one, you need to purchase it for yourself because you like just beautifully done images. And for that, we'll obviously thank Robert Boltz, even though he's departed. The guy just took some amazing photos. Um, the fact that that uh, you and Diane Keaton were able to get together and I'll throw this out there and say, Diane, thanks for recognizing Nick's talent because it's pretty goddamn good. Um, I've known that for a while, which is, <laughs> you know, why I've worked with Nick, but um, and for, for putting this book together, because it's it's amazing. It's one of those books and everybody that comes into our home that sees this thing, picks it up and you can tell when you're, you're in the middle of a conversation with a lot of people and then that one person just stays silent for a few moments and they just start flipping and then it's inevitable. They'll look up from the book and they'll be like, where'd you get this? <laughs> and it's my friend of mine, this is, this is kind of how the book happened. It is one of the most captivating books that I've had in a long time. And there's one paragraph or three paragraphs of words in the front from, from Diane Keaton. And that's about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Nick, it's, it's just unreal. I mean, with, since you have so many photos and, and you know, you and Ms. Keaton have so many photos, would there be another one? Is that something you've talked about? There, there are some thoughts that we've had about the daylight ones. Um, that's a little bit trickier as far as like getting real, like it's hard to, they're not as strong as the night. Okay. So it's like, it's hard to have like a, a sequel and have it not be as strong. But, right. you know, there's definitely some winners in there. So we've, we've thought about actually kind of going through and maybe doing it again. But I don't know, another 10 years it might take. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. For the photographs that are in the book, are there any plans to do a gallery? Because I could, I mean, obviously I could see this in a gallery. Are there any plans to do any type of exhibit where people are going to be able to come and view them and talk to you and, and talk to Diane about, you know, the, the, the photographs themselves? We've been thinking about it. I don't know if yet, you know, we're still in like the pandemic age where like gallery things are not happening. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's been discussed a little bit and we're sort of, we're floating the idea. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, fair enough. Well, everyone out there, this is a, a little bit of a shorter podcast, but I felt it really imperative to have Nick on to talk about this because the book is fantastic. And like I said, every time, and it's in my home. So every time I see it, I pick it up. And if I'm sitting on the couch or just in the office, I'll flip through it. And it always just kind of gets my mind rolling. And it's a very interesting thing to look at photographs of, of automobile wrecks. And all of a sudden, you're drawing some kind of thought process and or inspiration from something that's that's so tragic. But it 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 does. It's just a weird thing. But it does. Um, the book is called Dead of Night. It's through Twin Palms Publishers. Nick, where can everybody look for the book? Where can they, where can they get it? And so on. Um, there's some select like art bookstores will have it for sure. Like Arcana in LA has it. Um, there's a few other places. I can't really, I don't really know exactly where it is in everyone, but online is probably the easiest method. Um, Twin Palms, their own website has it. And okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's a really good book. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I do too. I think, yeah. So you have to go to twinpalms.com. That's the publishing company. You can see, if you click under products, you will see the book Dead of Night there. Um, you know, Robert, Robert Boltz took the original photographs years ago. Um, 
is edited by Diane Keaton and Nick Reed. It is an absolutely fabulous thing that you kind of need to go out and enjoy and, and, and just give it a look. Um, with that, Nick, thank you so much for coming on, dude. Yes, I wanted fun. to talk to you about this because it's, it's just really cool. Uh, as always, if you are looking for cars that aren't crashed, that aren't wrecked, you're at the right place with Hemmings. It's kind of weird to throw like a little plug for the <laughs> website in there and say, listen, go to our website. and We have 25,000 cars online. And check out our auction. But I'm doing that because it's Hemmings and we're amazing. So, Nick, thank you so much for coming on. The book, Dead of Night, absolutely incredible. Um, I would love to get, Diane, if you're listening, I want you to come on the show. If you want, you might be like, I don't know this guy. I'm not doing that. But if you want to, I'd love to talk about kind of your philosophy behind the book as well. Nick, thank you so much. Um, I don't know, brother. I guess we'll be talking soon. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody take care. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time on the Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast. Thanks for listening, folks. And again, please subscribe to the Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast. If you're on Spotify, check us out there. Subscribe to it on iTunes. And if you are going to go to YouTube, make sure you go to the Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast and uh, hit that subscribe button. And we'll come to you every week.